When you think of an archer commander in Rise of Kingdoms, I'm sure a lot of people go straight to YSG, also known as Yi Song Ye, and he is one of the first overpowered commanders you'll ever see for archers in Rise of Kingdoms. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a YSG in-depth guide, going over his skills, going over his pairs, going over his best talent trees, going over his equipment, and finally, if you should even consider investing him, especially in 2024. So if you're interested in YSG, maybe your early game, maybe you have him and you want to know if you still use him, you need to stick around until the end of the video. Now let's just start off by going over YSG's skills. Now I'm going to say one thing really quickly, his skill kit is very basic. You'll notice as I go through, there's nothing too complicated here. First of all, we have his active skill, and when it's not expertise, it does 1400 damage factor to 5 enemies in a fan shaped area. That is fairly decent. Then we look at his second skill, this is actually one of his strongest skills funny enough. It gives him a 10% chance to gain 100 extra rage. That's pretty much like giving him the feral nature talent tree in a skill, which is really nice. It means you can save a lot of talent points here and put them into other trees such as the archer tree. And then he also gains a 100% attack for 3 seconds, which is a lot of attack to be gaining. So YSG's second skill is pretty nice. The attack bonus... While it is a temporary bonus, is ridiculously strong the amount of attack you can get. And the rage gain is really good with a lot of commanders who have slow, slow rage gain. It pretty much unlocks a lot of opportunities for YSG to be used in the end game, in the early game with the commanders such as Thutmose. And I'll discuss that later, but it does give him a lot more potential because the rage gain is just a very high number. His second skill, third skill here, sorry, it's, a, it's probably his most useless skill. It is, if this commander is serving as one of your city's garrisons, your garrison gains 10% attack and your watchtower gains 10% attack. The watchtower attack is useless because with watchtowers, whenever you get attacked, they are the first thing to die. They die within like two to three turns and they're pretty useless. And the extra attack for the garrison, it's better than nothing if you're going to have to use them as a garrison, but it's super outdated. Nowadays, there are a lot more commanders with just all around better garrison stats for cities and for flags. So YSG's garrison skill here is pretty useless. It's the rest of his kit that really makes him strong. Moving on to his fourth skill. This is an insane skill. It's destiny and it pretty much allows him to deal 50% more skill damage at all times. There's no premises to this. Any troop type, just as long as YSG is in that kit, he can deal 50% more skill damage. So it's a really, really strong skill. It boosts his AoE massively. It boosts a lot of commanders damage massively, and it's just all around very strong. So that's probably another one of his stronger skills that you can unlock. Then finally, YSG's expertise, and this is probably another one of his strongest skills. It's basically a boost to his active skill. It allows him to deal direct damage to five enemy troops, damage factor 1700, in a circle shaped area. It doesn't say that it changes it in here, but it actually does change it. So this is probably your strongest thing in his whole entire kit. It gives him 300 extra damage factor to five targets. It makes it a circle and it makes him able to AOE barb farm. So YSG's expertise, definitely one of his stronger skills and it is certainly worth the gold heads. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Something we have to discuss before we discuss YSG's best skills is his museum relic as well. And his museum relic is actually pretty damn good. I mean, he gets 5% skill damage. That's kind of useless because his kit is already high in skill damage. But he also gains 20% defense, which is really good because you'll notice YSG does not have any defense inside of his kit at all. Like, there's nothing here. No defense, no health, no march speed. That's his biggest downside. And the relic definitely does help do that. So the second you get access to this museum relic, you're probably going to want to use it because the defense is actually a really big difference maker and it will make him a lot better and easier to run on the open field. And it's going to help him come up to speed with some of the more meta commanders that exist nowadays. So YSG's museum relic is definitely quite valuable. So now with that being said, what skills do I recommend for YSG? And I think simply in the early game, a 5-5-1-1 YSG is pretty good. A 5-1-1-5 YSG is also pretty good. So max the first skill, skip the second, skip the third, and max the fourth. Or also in the early game, if you can get access to this, a 5-5-1-5 YSG is also nice because you get access to all these open field skills. The only thing you are missing is his expertise. As you do move towards the end game, though, you're definitely going to need that expertise. The 300 damage factor here makes a massive difference. It makes him stronger than Nebuchadnezzar, and it's certainly worth it at that point. So if you're going to use him, you might as well commit and go for the expertise. He's not a commander I'd recommend just going half investment on. Like with Nebu before, 5511 would be fine with the Nebuchadnezzar. 
YSG, he's okay with 5511, don't get me wrong, but you might as well commit and get that expertise because it's certainly worth the extra gold heads and it's going to bring you a lot more end game value. But it just is only if you do choose to invest in him. So if you're not investing in him, you probably wouldn't go for that expertise, which I think would make a lot of sense. So really, the expertise is worth it, but his other skills are good. So just trying to get anything on the first skill, the second skill, or the fourth skill is your best bet. And skipping over that third skill until you go for his expertise. So just try and get everything on the attacking skills and nothing on the garrison skill. Now, as for talents on YSG, this is probably the build I'd recommend. You're not going to go in on the Feral Nature unless you're running him with an Edward of Woodstock. And that is because he doesn't need the rage gain. Like I showed you before, his second skill gives him more than enough rage. So running that initial talent tree I showed you is certainly going to be your best option. You go all in on the arch tree, you get Whistling Arrow, it's going to give you nice all damage bonuses. And then from the skill tree, you get some extra skill damage, you get skill damage taken reductions, you get Rejuvenate for a bit of a quicker rage cycle after your active skill. I think it's still worth it. And you also get Naked Rage. YSG really does benefit from this because he is a high damage AoE commander, so he's going to get more value from this skill than the damage it's going to deal to him. So Naked Rage is, in my opinion, worth the points with a YHG, especially if you're running him with another AoE commander. And obviously, I will talk about that very soon. So if you're running with another AoE commander, Naked Rage is definitely worth it, and it's going to give you a lot of value through the AoE damage. Also, a few other things to note, the Archer Tree does have Venomous Sting. If you're not going all in on it, make sure you do get that talent because it's really powerful for YSG since, once again, it's more skill damage, which will boost his AoE DPS. Now, if you did choose to go full in on the Feral Nature Tree, I'd do a build similar to this, but this is probably not the tree I'd recommend for YSG. Feral Nature will overlap a lot with his second skill and it's going to kind of screw you over. But if you do use it right and you do channel your points in it correctly, this Feral Nature Tree can actually be pretty good if you do get a bit lucky in some fights where you might get your active skill off in as little as six turns, which is completely insane. So Feral Nature is not the worst thing with YSG if you get lucky, but often it's not going to get nearly as much value as it would with commanders who don't have as strong of a rage engine since YSG's rage en engine is just insane. So if they are needing a lot of rage, you could go for the Feral Nature, but normally I'd recommend sticking with this first build here where you skip the Feral Nature and you go for the Archer Tree instead. So now as for pairings for YSG, we'll start off with some early game commanders here. And if you're in the really early game and you don't, you're only getting YSG and just YSG, any epic archer commander will work. Herman, Kusunoki, Kira, Ish, Imhotep, all those commanders will work fine with YSG. They're epic commanders, they're solid, I mean, for KVK1 and KVK2, and they'll just work with him. So if you want Kusunoki for the AoE, that's certainly reasonable. If you also want to get Herman Prime for the single target silence and the rage reduction, it's also reasonable. So any epic commander with YSG, preferably you'd go Herman or Kusunoki, or if you have Kira expertise, she's probably slightly better than both of them, and you'd be in a good position. So YSG with any of the three epic archer commanders here, will be perfectly fine. Even if you do have an Emotep for whatever reason, he'll also work with Emotep. Will it be OP? Not really, but it would certainly work. Other than that, for the early KVKs, you haven't got too many options for legendary commanders. YSG with Edward of Woodstock is definitely worth the mention because it's really overpowered in KVK2, but it's pretty much useless in KVK3. So keep that in mind. Edward of Woodstock is good KVK2, rubbish KVK3, and that's something you should definitely consider. Also, YSG with Tamiris is a bit of de-synergy here, where Tamiris wants a slow rage cycle. YSG is giving a fast rage cycle, but they can sometimes work together if they're your only two legendary archer commanders. And in KVK2, if you have both these commanders' expertise, They'll be absolutely shredding and they'll be fine. And the last commander I'll mention, our last two, Thumos is amazing with YSG and KVK1 as a rally and an open field commander. And it's probably one of the strongest open field pairs. And then El Cid with YSG is also really solid just because there's a lot of synergy between El Cid's defense and El Cid's instant damage and also El Cid's ridiculous march speed. So really any of the legendary archer commanders you can access up into KVK2 will work really, really good with a YSG. As for Season of Conquest pairs worthy of note, Henry, in my opinion, is one of his best pairs because when you think about it, Herman Prime and these other absolute meta archer commanders have better pairings with other commanders than with a YSG, but Henry is going to get the most value from YSG because you can run your Henry as the primary, meaning you can take less skill damage quicker, and YSG can give him the rage from the, the skill, like the Feral Nature skill. So pretty much, you're getting Feral Nature, putting on a Henry who has the support tree, giving him that quicker rage cycle, allowing him to use the support tree more, and Henry's really, really tanky. So Henry with YSG, in my opinion, is the best Archer March to run a YSG with, 
if you have access to a Henry and already have other meta commanders already. So Henry YSG, in my opinion, is the best Archer March for value if you have the other commanders with different commanders. If you're looking for just a baseline pairing, you don't have a Henry yet, you don't have a Herman, don't have a Zulang, then Herman is probably your best bet. He's got a lot of synergy with YSG, boosting AoE, dealing an AoE poison effect, which will increase both of their damages, and YSG's skill damage increase is going to launch Herman Prime's damage to the next level, not to mention Herman has defense and also has march speed, which are really, really good with YSG, and he has some damage reduction, which once again is also pretty damn good with a YSG. So Herman Prime with YSG, probably your best overall pairing for pure strength, but I think Henry gets the most value from a YSG if you do have him unlocked, because Zulang with Herman is just going to be a better march since it's just stronger. And that being said, Zulang also works with YSG, and Boudicca works with YSG and Ashurban Nepal. So really any of those meta commanders, Herman, Boudicca, Zulang, Henry, and Ashurban Nepal are all very good with their YSG. And you'll notice they'll perform pretty adequately. Other than that, I mean, there are some niche pairs. You've got Ramses who could work with him, and that's probably about it. I mean, also Nebuchadnezzar, but he's kind of out of the meta. Same thing with Ramses. So they're going to struggle, but they could work with him in a pinch if they're your only commanders. And they'll perform okay, but I wouldn't recommend Cyrus and commanders like that because they are a little bit too squishy to be run with an already fairly squishy commander. So, so in summary, YSG's best pairing is, in my opinion, a Henry for value, or best pairing for pure trades would just be a Herman because he is the strongest, or a Zulang because he is also one of the strongest archer commanders in the game. So really, Henry, Herman, or Zulang are going to be your absolute best bets with a Season of Conquest March with a YSG. Now, as for equipment on YSG, I mean, you can get a little bit creative here with what you run. I recommend running Ring of Doom. I mean, I think that's a fairly obvious one because YSG doesn't really have much march speed. Even the commanders you put him with, they're not going to be ridiculously fast. So Ring of Doom, I think that's fine to put it with him. And then you can consider Horn of Fury. I mean, my YSG isn't run with a Horn of Fury at the moment, but you can consider it if you do want it. Personally, I think you go for another different rage accessory, and this could be a Kurok's War Drums. Because if you're running a YSG with your other marches, for example, maybe you're running a YSG as a march within your murder ball and you've got a cav march and an infantry march and another archer march and it's like your fourth or fifth march, Kurok's War Jumps are pretty good for that because he's going to boost their rage and he doesn't really need the rage game gain himself. So giving him this lower chance to gain rage is fine and you'd rather give the Horn of Fury to commanders who don't have YSG's level of a rage engine. So I think the Kurok's War Jumps Oddly enough, is pretty good with YSG. And then you've got stuff like Concealed Dagger and, Fer and Mora's Web, sorry, which are pretty good. But those, you're going to need a little bit more March Speed, which is why I'd rather have the Kurox War Drums than I would these other two accessories here. One thing I see a lot of people say is the one that allows you to increase skill damage. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's the Pendant of the Eternal Knight. In my opinion, I don't know if it's really worth going for this because it's the same amount of legendary materials for 5% more skill damage. And things like YSG's skill give 50%, his relic gives 5%, the Ottoman Civilization gives 5%, the Archer Equipment gives another like 3 or 4%. So I don't know if it's worth getting the Pendant of Eternal Knight for 160 legendary materials when you could get something like a Horn of a Ring of Doom, a Horn of Fury, or a Kurox War Drums, or even just one of the debuffing accessories, which is probably going to benefit you a little bit more in the long run, in my opinion at least. So Pendant of the Eternal Knight, it's okay with a double AoE march, but in my opinion, you'd be better off with some of those more game changing and more unique accessories compared to just a boring skill damage boost. So now that we've discussed everything about YSG's kit, his commanders, his pairs, his skills, his equipment, what do I think of him as an investment right now? And I've made a full video dedicated to this card will be up in the top if I can remember. And really, I mean, he's an okay investment. He's good for KVK1, he's decent in KVK2, he's decent in KVK3, and he's decent in Season of Conquest. But there are better commanders. You've got Zulang, you've got Henry, you've got Boudicca, you've got Herman. All these other commanders are just stronger commanders than YSG, and they've got more endgame value. Even a Shobani Pal, in my opinion, has a bit more endgame value than a YSG. So overall, I think YSG is a decent commander nowadays. He still performs really well in his equipment and all that. He's still fairly up to date. There's nothing that's majorly new that makes him bad. So I think overall, YSG is decent if you want that short-term investment, like I've said a lot. But in terms of a long-term investment, you're better off with those much more meta commanders who have stronger pairings and stronger options than a YSG would. So overall, in my opinion, YSG is a solid investment, but he's not the best in the game. So now that we've made it to the end of today's video, I just want to ask you guys to do me a very small favor, and that is 
consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I push out some of the best Archer content I can. I'm going to be remaking all my in-depth guides for the older Archer Commanders. So if you're an Archer man, you're considering investing in Archer Commanders, trust me, my channel is going to be one, oh, that's actually pretty good, one of the better channels to subscribe to. So if you're interested in Archer content, if you want to be able to use Archer Commanders effectively, you have to subscribe to the channel. And also, it really does support me as a creator. So to all those people who are already subscribed, it's very, very much appreciated. And to all the new subscribers, a massive thank you to you as well. Now, I just want to thank you guys all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.